catching up with Tex tonight. Thanks, Jane and John. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the program. Later, we reveal Adelaide's rate-busting mortgage beating the banks by a whole 1%, and TV's MasterChef and its effect on the economy. But first, we consume it every day with the reassurance from our health authorities that it is doing us good. The truth is, fluoride is a poison, and adding it to our drinking water is an evolving social experiment started 40 years ago. Now one of the world's top fluoride experts has issued a grim warning about what it could be doing to our health and that of unborn children. Yet as Frank Pangello reports, you'll get a different spin from dentists and health bureaucrats. We consider that as a poison. Why should a poison be in drinking water? The poison is fluoride. It's there because government health bureaucrats and dentists tell us it's for our common good, for reducing tooth decay, and at levels which won't harm you. That doesn't wash with Professor A.K. Shashila. They should realise it's the poisonous substance. It doesn't promote health. It is, it is a disease-causing agent, and the fluoridation should be stopped as early as possible. Professor Shashila is one of the world's leading experts on fluoride. Her own extensive research, along with 70 years of data in India, backs up what she's saying, and it's most disturbing. I would consider the, the, a pregnant mother taking fluoride-contaminated products, I'm using the word products, which includes water, toothpaste, black tea, uh, uh, processed food products which has fluoride. Any liquid? Any liquid, anything. At a, where her urinary fluoride is high, she is going to cause a lot of damage to the fetus, the growing embryo, the infant which is going to be born. The American Dental Association warns against using fluoridated water to mix baby formula. Not so here. They don't read, they are not aware, they don't update themselves, they don't do any research. So we are in a serious problem. Professor Shashila says exposure to fluoride could also be the cause of many ills like neck, shoulder and joint pains, which may be misdiagnosed by doctors. She routinely does urine tests to check fluoride levels in her patients. Remove the fluoride ingestion, starting from toothpaste, black tea, uh, fluoridated water, whatever, and you bring down the urinary fluoride to normal limits, the patient recovers. Fluoride is also used as a preservative and also lurks in many products we consume. But apart from toothpaste, it's not listed on labels. So it is coming into one's body through many sources and you are not aware of it. The fluoride that goes into our drinking water is toxic waste from the production of fertiliser. For maybe a hundred years, the phosphate fertilizer industry put out two very, very poisonous gases into the environment, hydrogen fluoride and silicon tetrafluoride. Eventually, they were required to capture those, and they did it with a wet spray, water, and that water converts these two very toxic gases into hexafluorosilicic acid. And it's this scrubbing liquor, which is about 25% strong, is put into tanker trucks, driven around the country, and added to our drinking water. Here's what's in the mix made in Australia. A sickening cocktail of heavy metals like arsenic, barium, beryllium, cadmium, lead, mercury, and on it goes. And in much higher concentrations than is allowed for lead and arsenic. Why should we make people drink a poisoned water? Well, it's forced medication for the masses. And there are more than 1,000 doctors and scientists around the world who, like Professor Shashila, condemn what's going on. The problem with adding medicine to water is an obvious one of consent, that people can't give their informed consent, which is a basic of medical ethics. Fluoride is about to be added to Mount Gambier's water from the Blue Lake. Alex Young is livid. He's collected a petition of more than 6,000 signatures against the move, or a quarter of the town, which has been ignored by the state government. The issue of fluoridation has largely been um, ignored by the government in not terms they want to push it, but in terms of allowing the community to have a say in the matter. We just, they simply just ignore us. And I am, and the rest of the group here, are just amazed at the level of ignorance shown on this matter. We wanted to talk to someone in SA Health about the issue. 
Instead, we got a written statement which didn't address our questions directly. It claims Mount Gambier children have 78% more tooth decay than those in Adelaide who drink fluoridated water, and that it's considered safe and used in other developed countries like the USA, UK and Canada. Well, there aren't many more on that list, as anti-fluoride campaigner Professor Paul Conant points out. Most European countries do not fluoridate. Austria, Belgium, the Netherlands, France, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, Italy, Greece, Portugal. The overwhelming number of countries in the world do not fluoridate, and guess what? Their teeth are just as good, if not better, than ours. It aggravates dental decay. The tooth gets pitted, perforated, it gets chipped off, it breaks, and also at a much younger age, the people will become edentulous, means they will lose their teeth. The anti-fluoride movement says while there's ample evidence to support what they're saying, governments still refuse to listen or fund research to study the impact it has on health. The real culprit here is these um, bureaucrats who are spinning the information before it gets to the, the, the decision makers and that's what's outraged. We expect, I think, politicians to spin, but we shouldn't expect civil servants to spin. A mistake? Yes, of course.